Welcome back. That's right, the two Western powerhouses of uh, OG and Tundra are both matching up against each other here. And while they may be coming from the same region, we've got two very different styles. And I can definitely see a world where if Tundra plays as well, suddenly Sankings Lloyd's King off can't come up to the wave as a sentry pool might good. Ooh, that was a lot of damage. Skater actually getting super low. And that's it. Amar picks up the first blood. You, you also have a uh, enemy mid that you play up against quite a bit, and Gunner, who also plays the mid toss all the time. Yeah, we're gonna watch uh, Taiga actually. Looks like he's gonna be chased down here, snaking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, the double high ground hit. What are you talking about that? One? You're getting doubled up on board, it's pretty bad. Man. Another Burrow Strike fight. Yeah, Sandstorm doing some work. Snake King's gonna hop out of it to be able to finish off Taiga. Should be no problems there. And you can see the strength of the Slark is building up now against the Sand King. He has no options here. He's gonna be blocked off. He does manage to pick up the Bounty Rune, yes, but this is uh, all but inevitable. He's gonna go for the Burrow Strike, perhaps to the other side of the cliff, but he gets hit by the Snowball first before he could get the jump away. Already a good start. Probably missed five early, but we won't count those. <laughs> oh, they get the pounce. Here comes the rotation there from nine. Shows nine. up. And uh, while well, we were talking about which of the side lanes are we going to be targeting here at the Tusk, because we know he's going to rotate around. OG's supports cannot drag their cores into the game. All right. These are backline supports with heals and nukes. The upside is once your cores come online, OG Ooh. supports come online as well. That's why they're trying to get this blink on uh, on Amar. He's gonna do some ancient Got the farming. epicenter. He's gonna throw it out here. He's gonna do some ancient farming right under the nose of Tundra, apparently, while Taiga is gonna be chased down by nine here. No hope to be able to save him. Amar popped the healing salve underneath this sandstorm while the rest of Tundra trying to get the last hits. He got a sentry, it seems. Nice Dude. trying to hold the aggro out of the sandstorm yeah. here. Whoa. Got them both. Very nicely played, and he gets a little bit of damage. There it is. Now they see him. Oh, the pounce barely off the mark. And Bro strikes over the side, and now BCM is here to be able to help him out. Amar just on the sliver of HP, but he can't quite see him. They're going to be able to kill Skeeter as well. BCM to the rescue, and now nine may be the third pickup as OG. Oh, beautiful shards. BCM doesn't quite have a lot of mana. Does he have enough to be able to jump over to the other side? His slide is not going to be good enough. It's BCM. Yeah, he is yeah. very farmed. I mean, uh, you can uh oh nice shot. First down, Amar, with the help of the birds, they'll keep that chain stun going. Maybe they force this mid push a bit too much, waste some time, and now suddenly their economy gets hurt a lot, and OG, you know, starts to creep back a little bit. I mean, this and is the Slark defusal. We're on a level 7. Amar's just channeling. Yeah, he you know. Ooh, okay, okay. Snowball, they're gonna go for Misha here, Amar. Still trying to set up. Good save from Taiga. The Crystal Maiden still eventually going to die. And look at that. Soxa gets a really nice toss back onto the Oracle as well. Taiga does what he can, but ultimately he's just going to be throwing damage around before he eventually dies and gives another stack over to Skeeter. Man, the amount of pump fakes from Amar. I thought he knew that smoke was coming. I was like, yeah, oh my, seriously. how does he know? But I think they were just, again, anticipating this mid move. They had the Sand King Blink. They had the Ember Maelstrom. But there's more coming now, and yeah, I mean, the map being small like this, OG's heroes, they can only really kill you out of small. Oh, they surprised him, but the Shrink Morph went off just in time, and now that is actually baited 9 into death here, because OG actually brought the full party here. Everybody but Amar is hanging out in this Radiant Jungle. Looking for Amar again. Oh, sneaking in from behind. Sox is going to be able to get the toss back, and they land the pounce immediately afterwards. Burrow strike in a second, but he can't get it off in time. That pounce just lasted too long, and the TP had to be canceled, so this is a free tower push. And then suddenly, maybe your main woods are under threat, or you have to waste a glyph on this tier 2 bottom, and then you have the next tier 2. Yeah, so there's the glyph. That's a unique aspect of Mirana as a support, right? It kind of functions like those hoodwinks or something, because he could be up there and probably won't die because of his mobility. Well, Soxa, well, he doesn't have the same kind of options, and once again will be victim of OG's aggression. I know they've been spotted, but yeah, they're still going to go for that mid-tower regardless. It's low. There's they a glyph them. here. Uh, free pick up on Nisha, yep. but there is going to be the jump in from DCM. He's getting caught by the birds, perhaps. They, the Morphling cut out of mana. Needed to go for a snake. He gets burned out of all this mana. They land the pounce there as well. And 33 is full hill. Here comes the epicenter. And Nisha with a great ultimate as well. The arrow! It stops the epicenter. No chance for Amar. A toss back from Soxa. What a hit with the avalanche shots combination, bringing everybody low. And Tundra just got to clean through the OG heroes. Oh man, what an arrow to stop that epicenter. So much damage to gain in the fight. OG cannot clean it up. I'm not sure they were going to be close with that Wraith pack down and put already on this visage, but absolute disaster. You see the way Ember Remnant's in there. Like, it's very like, we're losing. We need to make something happen. I need to catch yeah. a guy. Oh. 
pounce immediately afterwards. Manta trying to dodge a little bit of damage. She does manage to get the flight jump away just in time. The pounce faded, but Nine is just able to go for the next hero. Taiga, he was there to try and help out BZM and may have been able to do something, but uh, does cost him his own life and apparently cost him their tier two top tower as well. OG not that unhappy with the way the map is being split right now. You see them run all the way down bottom, touch a reaction. OG's already up in top lane, buying some time. Like, you know, the gold lead since they got the Aegis, not really changed very much. Feature, that was rather bold. Anything for that extra frostbite, I guess. Uh, you just walked in melee range of the birds on that one, and Tundra's like, okay, we are already planning on pressuring some more. Ooh, Amar? Soxa really trying to force this by going behind. It does set up Amar for the opportunity. The epicenter oh. for the avalanche actually went out there, installed things out, and with the more playing already dead, there goes all your yeah. damage. Tundra, they're just way too big. Like we saw earlier, they're just farming it up everywhere. I mean, Skeeter's just Sorry. going into the whole team alone. Finds an opening here, Taiga. Not going to be hit by the arrow, but still hit by that extra pounce. He's going to have a little bit of help here. He does, of course, have the Aegis, so it's perfectly fine for Skeeter to be super aggressive here. After all, he's setting up the rest of the team to come in from behind. Nice block in there with the shards. He's going to set up an arrow. That's going to land onto Taiga. They're going to leave their supports behind. OG full bailing out once again. They do not have the firepower to win team fight. This is such a huge power spike in 20 minutes of the game. What can OG do? They're, they're literally just helpless. They're watching their buildings die. I think if Tundra went top, which, I mean, they're probably going to play it safe and farm a little more gold, wait for the right jump. They're, they're running it down your throat. Nice. Good toss back. I mean, he just has so many setups, right? If you toss him straight up in the air, it would have been an arrow. He tosses him over the Skeeter to allow the pounce to land. Tips start coming out, sneaking. I mean, Amar, no impact, no idea. He has not had a whole lot of fun in this Sand King game. But they are just searching for any sort of extra damage at this point. Double. Yeah, you can see your bull. Uh oh. Oh, up with the punch, the snowball, the arrow, arrow. coming in as well. The strength warp is doing its work, but now they've got the pounce, and that's going to be good enough. Misha, freezing field, but he get, just dies too damn quickly. BCM is going to be locked down. Amar goes through, hits the pro strike, only onto one. They're focusing on 33, but he is super tanky, and Skeeter is completely uncontested. One by one, he will just knock down these heroes, take away their agility, and that is it. OG. Well, GG out. This is no contest. Tundra, 26 and 7 in this game one. This had to have been a hell of a confidence boost here on the main stage of TI. And in the end, it's going to be Spirit Breaker played by Nine. The old school combo, Life Stealer plus Spirit Breaker. You know, that, that's going to be oh, very I would love interesting to, see to watch. I'm also curious about this mid matchup. The, weird, the panel discussed a little bit the Spirit Breaker versus the Primal Beast. This match was very weird, right? Because you're. <laughs> Well, right. as I say that, and really get into the minutia. So, Unga Bunga. <laughs> um, that's, 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 that's the most of it, yeah. <laughs> He's walking him down. Oh, there it is. You okay. said it. I, it's just who, who bigger, you know, who bigger who. He is that's all it is. And, and he and Denny. <laughs> so it looks like. OG, CSY is pretty happy with all their lanes. The Phantom Lancer, who's bottom of the bunch, really isn't that far behind. Seems like mid lane's going very well, which is a little surprising to me. Taiga is going to be able to pick up the kill on Seeking again here. This does not seem to match up well against this four Oracle. Misha getting a little bit low, but so is 33. Yuragi gunning for it. Does have one more Phantom Rush, and that final swing will get the kill. A big one to be able to take down 33's Visage. Now Misha is going to get a bit low here, enough to push him back. Here comes the uh, actual charge. First big rotation, the actual charge coming in from nine. They're going to start throwing some damage into Yuragi. They managed to force him to use the Doppelganger early, which means this charge is going to be beautiful. Oh. Place Misha interrupt, but they can't quite stop it. Nine still gets off his ultimate and will be able to get the kill on the yeah. BZM is now here. The and dinosaur. he just grabs up Soxa, slams his head into the pavement, and bye-bye supports. There's nowhere for him to run to. Taiga will gladly take that killing spray. He's like, you know what, guys? Yeah, I'm going to play the sacrificial role. I'm going to play these healers and stuff, but I still want the last hit. This right here is not what you want to see. Yeah. Life Stealer has been kicked out of his lane, and that is a worry. Um, if you're ever on the team with Life Stealer and he's getting forced to leave. BCM protecting Taiga and the setup here. Taiga. Secures the kill with the Purifying Flames. A dominating streak for him. Are they going to get a fast Vessel in this game? I don't even think they're going to get a fast Urn. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this guy's going to be invincible. And Oh, he's begging for a badge. Okay, they do manage to get it off of the Fissure. 
Skeeter is joining in here. I mean, they got to do something a little bit funky here because, as you said, this game is not setting up well. So Out apparently all charge. the cores are going to come into this mid area and try and chase down BZN with the uproar. He's got some armor, so he's not the easiest to kill, but he will eventually go down. This is like last game, Amar moving down bottom to defend the tower against the 33 Visage push. Only now, he can actually do it, right? Yeah. He is a much bigger boy with a lot more armor than that Sand King. <laughs> Snake King, he went and denied the rune. The Fisher comes out, and BZM still managed to get the charge forward. Snake King is going to be grabbed up here. Slam, slam, slam. He doesn't have a leap, so bye-bye, Snake King. He's going to go infest inside of Nine. They're going to try and set this up. Nine actually popping out of that smoke. Taiga's already here as well. They're going to start scouting things behind the tower. They're going to go for Amar, but Taiga is behind him. They need to be able to address this Oracle and kill him quickly. They get that fast kill, and now Amar, let's see if they can chase him down. Soxa was on the other side of things. He's going to need Seems to hit coming. a lot of stuns, and the rest of OG, yeah, they're here. Amar turning around with the Chakra and the Moonlight Channel. Allows them to get on top of BZM. Uh oh, All they right. didn't have any detection. They didn't expect this one. Even with the arrow coming it's not needed. They just bursted down that primal beast. Where was all that damage? At any point, Tundra has the map sorts themselves. They can make this move there, and it's a bit awkward for OG. Yeah, they're trying to run it back and get the punish without the numbers. Double core and commitment for OG. Soxa trying to intercept. It was a good echo, but unfortunately, he just doesn't have the damage. Doesn't have the levels, no aftershock, or just level one, rather. So he's probably going to get chased down as well, and Snaking just has to fully abandon his bottom lane. OG showing up in force. Yeah, we see Yuragi. He, he's actually going S and Y here. So he's going to build S and Y into heart. That is going to be extremely hard for Tundra to deal with. Meanwhile, BZM, he's just keeping his pedal, his foot on the pedal here. Yep, trying to go for Zoxa. They do have Skeeter showing up with their charge coming through as well. BZM may be in a bit of trouble here, but Taiga's sitting in the back. He's ready to go with the save of the False Promise. Misha, he's going to use it there. Taiga, Misha turns it's around. Fight. He does what damage he can. False Promise is going to wear out. He probably will die here, but at least he did some damage on his way out. Taiga almost getting charged. They lose Vision. Oh, now the they get into the charge. Oh, the self purge. What a beauty. Oh, oh. And a big onslaught in from BZM. Knocking back four. He'll bring down Snake King first with the Infest inside of his nine. They're going to be able to get a little bit of a reset here. But is OG going to keep pursuing? Is Your Tundra going to fight here. back underneath his tower? Both teams posturing, fainting, but ultimately not pulling the trigger. What a sick fortunes end by Taiga there. Catches them both, prevents the charge connection. Gets Very the purge nice. as well. And BZM is just ramping. Oh, the damage is just overwhelming. A DD for BZM. Tundra was smoking there. I think they really wanted to be there at that moment to take the fight, turn it around with the life stealer. They still have an opportunity. Maybe the, the first down BZM to get him. And the jump in from Nisha puts him in a nasty position. Skeeter should be able to finish this up. Once again, there's going to be the false promise, but Nisha knows he's dead. He'll just go down fighting where he can. Amar's going to show up. Skeeter needs to go now. That's the invest, he's dead. Overextending himself. Echo. Oh, Yorani is overextending himself. And the Fisher straight over onto Amar with a nice touch there from Soxta as well. Like he's almost a blink on top of the shard. This fight's helping him. OG want to keep the pace up, looking for 33. The birds are going to drop, stopping that channel. Shouldn't be a problem here for 33 to get out, but maybe Tundra wants to go back in. They see Amar. Skeeter leading the charge. He's going to start slowing him down. With the Maelstrom, actually does a little bit of damage there. BCM. Oh, he was trying to hunt down Soxa. Now the turn around Fisher, and once again, he's just getting to 100 to 0. No BKB going on. 33. Yuragi was trying to dress him to be able to eat through that cloak, but now Tundra. Playing together, went back to 33, made sure the Phantom Lancer wasn't a problem. Now they're going to try and chase down some more heroes, and that's going to be Taiga. Once again, he's following his course into battle, but when they lose that fight, he has no way out. And he is just the plus one after every lost team fight. This is the blink reveal. He's going to go and with this smoke get a, a really nice lane ward, but if the smoke breaks right, right here, he's going to go for it. Fisher goes out, jumps Come right on. in. Echo, half health already, but the damage still isn't there. They need more follow from the rest of the team. Skeeter's trying to do what he can, but the false problem has already gone out on Yuragi. Yuragi's going to go back in. He needs that Aegis. Wants to be able to pick it up. Yeah. And then it snaps it away. Now grabs up the life stealer, slams him down to the ground, and he's dead. Misha, he's going to fall, but the fight is won, and Tundra are on the retreat. 33, going to be chased down by BZM. Big, bad, primal beast slows him down, and they're going to just keep the vision. 33 has no way out of this one, I think. Slowly but surely. They're going to catch up to him. They're going to work him down. And that is going to be three heroes dying. And the Aegis picked up for OG. 
What a turn that could have been if only Tundra had been there with more heroes. Saxa hit the entry, but there was no follow-up. Aegis is not on that Phantom Lancer. Yeah. The sieging is a bit worse from OG, but that said, I don't think Yoragi's too scared. Yeah, definitely isn't. No, he is not scared at all. They're going to once again do the turnaround with a Fissure and put some damage onto him. But, of course, not only does he have Oracle, he's got the Aegis, he's got a BKB. Charge from behind. Out there. Ooh, this is interesting. Vanish gets two. The most important hero, Oracle, dies first, and Misha's going to fall too. BTM has already lost his Aegis. Tundra, this charge in from nine, may have just set them up for a fantastic team fight. Other the second party's going to get the charge on through. Doesn't actually hit the real Phantom yeah, Lancer. But the charge comes in from BZM this time with the Onslaught. He's going to go for the BKB TP out and just make sure he stays alive. Thanks to the uproar, that extra armor is going to go to work. Spearbreaker is one of those sets of core. It kind of snowballs in that regard, right? If you get to the Shadow Blade, Aghanim Scepter and such, and you one-shot waves, then you just continue to build up on those items. But if you don't get to that point, you just become another support, perhaps. Uh oh He's going to maybe have to blow the BKB. Nope, the Fisher's going to come through. Really good tap. Another Ice Echo. They're going to change on your Oh, the Onslaught is not enough to be able to save him. The BKB goes out from nine. They go for the Invest. Knight can keep the charge going up, but he's speedily. He had a laser focus. He is looking out for that Oracle. He's got a head on a swivel. And he found them, and now they're going to be able to get the Timber Saw as well. Nine. Really good Sam. I mean, Skeeter jumping inside of him enabled that in the first place, but nine being able to find the right hero to charge every time. At some point, it's a little bit spooky for OG to actually start the fight, like Avery was saying. Now Tundra just boldly going into the triangle here. Yuragi's going to start it off, though. Yeah, once again, they, they found the Shaker. Found sinking. They found the Earth Shaker. That is so important. They have the Chakram going out. Soxa gets a little bit of four step away. Sinking helps him out, and they manage to reset. Meanwhile, Skeeter put the damage and already killed Misha. They're going to find the real Phantom Lancer here. Managed to get the ultimate off on him, too. He's going to be false promise. They need to be able to save him. BZM right in the middle of things. Trying to go for the break, but the Vincent took hardly any damage whatsoever. And it seems like Tundra as a whole are looking pretty good as the Echo goes out in the back lines to try and distance himself away from the this Timber Saw. And now the rest of the team starts funneling in. They weren't able to get that chain stun. Visage needs to get out as well. Fortunately, that Aghanim Scepter allowing him to fly away. He's keeping on top of Yuragi. While Lamar did find a little cubby hole to be able to TP out. This peel here, he's not really able to solo Kabu because there are so many stuns on Dire. There's so much kiting, the four staff, the invis, all this garbage. Oh, another infest. Oh, they found the Oracle. the Oracle. They had the vision. They get the charge, and they also hit Nisha at the same time. So both supports already get in this team fight. Meanwhile, Yuragi. Most of his time was spent being stunned. Visage familiars and the Visage himself dropping one after the other completely stalled out any damage he could get down during that time. Yeah, and we actually saw OG had a gem earlier in this game. That's why they got it. Because they knew they needed this vision on the front line. Yeah. That was lost a long time ago. Taiga's gem in the hands of 33 Visage for a decent amount of time now. Not easy to take these fights vision-wise, and Tundra looking for the, the pincer maneuver here. Yes, they are. They found the real Yuragi. Can they get the arrow stun? Not quite. He does manage to doppelganger away to the side. They have the Fisher to stall it up, but at this point... 33 in the back, though. Point. Oh, he is in the back, and he's going to be able to catch. He's, they spotted the Oracle. Their charge is coming through, and he's already dead. BCM, meanwhile, does manage to grab 33. They've broken him and managed to get through his cloak, but he dropped down into stone form, so he's good. And Skeeter now comes in with a cleanup. A charge on through. Bumping BCM. Gets a bash as well. He's done. Slammed on the Yuragi, and that is it. Triple pickup for Skeeter. Ultra kill in the end. And... Now, it's going to be a lane. It's going to be straight up tier four. So are we going to go for it? They are going. That's a Amar. Call. Amar buys out Ags. He's trying to get the extra damage oh to this way. Oh, my God. The double chakrams are going to be thrown out. This could be really messy. This could be... You have a serious lead here. You don't necessarily need to do this. If Neil has to buy back here, it would be a disaster for OG's item progression. Let's see if they can hold. Double, Double Chakram's doing so much damage. This buyout of the Aghanim Scepter, it may just be what bails out OG, Man, or maybe Tundra can be done. Misha gets on top. The Vintage is dead! He doesn't manage to get off the stone fort. They've already cleared through the ages as well. Nine, he's going to have to jump away. The Shadow Blade back out. Soxa spotted as well. Oh no, Tundra. Now they're not even going to be able to get a lane of barracks off of that. They no cleared out fast. the tier fours. No infest. He's got an arm and toggle to work with, but he needed to get grabbed. The charge on through. Get yeah, nine. Nine. He gets canceled by the AoE stun from BZM, and now nine is going to be in some trouble. Run down by the Phantom Rush. A chance of revenge. A charge away just in time. The last bit of damage wasn't there quite yet. Tundra still a massive lead. Don't get me wrong. Get the combination of the right initiating stun oh, and the damage to follow it up to win a fight for OG. This is a great opportunity if they can get it. 
The sneaking kill, maybe not so much, but the Earthshaker does manage to slip away. Now the charge on through, they couldn't even kill the pot up. Misha is now dead. Amar's looking for something to be able to hunt, but look at Soxa playing the edges here. He's ready to go back in. The charge is controlling up BCM. He's not getting anything off. Now they've got the Fissure. The chain's done on the Phantom Lancer. Yes, a false promise goes off last second, but is he even going to be able to have the heals? He's got the heart pumping away. He starts to throw some damage over to nine, but it's just pitiful. Not He's going to get stomped out. The heart G -G. is not going to be enough, and GG is called Tundra 2-0 over OG. They've done it again. They set themselves in a position to be able to match up against their rivals within the Western European region. They said, we are good enough to take you. They have lost some series before, but the important ones they've managed to pull through against OG, and they did it again on the most important stage ball here at TI.